What's going on guys and welcome back to the crack -a pack series uh, before we jump into this one I just want to mention we do have our end of the year giveaway going on right now where we are giving away a free booster box uh, We've never given away a booster box before uh, but we're giving away a full booster box of throne of Eldraine uh, so if you would like to enter, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel, of course, uh, comment on any video with Booster Box Giveaway, hashtag Booster Box Giveaway, I should say, uh, and then you're entered to win. Uh, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it can be on any video, does not matter which one. Uh, if you do that, you are entered to win, and the winner will be chosen on December 20th, which I believe is a Friday. Uh, that Hopefully we can get it out to you guys in time for Christmas, that's kind of the idea. Uh, and if not, certainly by the end of the year. Uh, so. Uh, if you are interested in entering, please do so. We really do appreciate the support. Uh, I also released an article on our website, which is it resolvesmtg.com, kind of reminiscing over the last uh, year or so of It Resolves and the things that we've done in the last year and the goals that we've either met or not met. Uh, so I highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, it's thanks to you guys that we're able to do these things. So I just want to sincerely thank all of you. Uh, genuinely, we couldn't be doing the things that we're doing without you. Uh, patrons especially, we really do appreciate all the, the help there uh, because obviously they they monetarily support us to be able to open up packs like these and do really, really cool videos. So uh, overall, though, we really do appreciate all the support. Uh, I don't want to rant too long. Let's get into it. Let's jump in. We've got a Ravnica City of Guilds pack here. This is a really, really cool set. Uh, in fact, I think it's my favorite set. Uh, lots of really cool flavor. Uh, obviously, the gills are the big thing here. We're going to be looking at two color combinations, mostly. Uh, there are quite a lot of really good cards in this set. Uh, surprisingly, not to say there aren't any in the rare slot, but a lot of them are actually in like the uncommon slot. Uh, there's just really solid cards in this set all the way through. Uh, the rare slot does have, of course, some really good ones as well, so hopefully we'll see those as we go through. But uh, we are going to go through every card and hopefully figure out what our first round draft pick will be. As such... Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to go through some of the cool mechanics that were like brought into uh, this set So let's jump right in convolute is our first card here. It is an instant for two and a blue uh, Counter target spell unless its controller pays four uh, Pretty straightforward counter spell. It's not an amazing card by any means But if you're in a blue control style deck, uh, this is perfectly fine uh, It does give the opponent the out of paying for uh, and then you know technically they can if they have enough lands They can kind of get around this uh, but they do still have to sink mana into it. So I find myself in some positions, uh, late game especially, countering something knowing full well that they can pay for it, but just to make sure that they're not playing, you know, a secondary spell uh, or something along those lines that keeps them off of their lands. So uh, it's not a bad counter spell. It's also not an amazing first pick, though. Uh, so it's certainly not going to be the pick here, but it's perfectly playable, decently fine uh, regular counter spell. Uh, Demir Aqueduct uh, is part of a land cycle, so it does come into play tapped. Uh, when it does come into play, you do have to bounce another land you control to its owner's hand. Uh, and so that kind of sucks, but uh, it does tap for both blue and black. And these are really, really good lands. Uh, I just want to like impress upon everybody, if you're playing this set like in a flashback draft or something like that, these bounce lands are incredibly good. Uh, for multiple reasons. One, obviously, they tap for both of your colors, and uh, they technically kind of ramp you depending on how you play them. Uh, ideally, you use a land, uh, basic land, whatever it might be, uh, to play something on your turn, and then you play this afterwards, bounce the land that you've already used, and then next turn you're up a land. Uh, that's kind of the idea behind these. Uh, so they give you fixing, they give you ramp. Uh, it's really nice to be able to splash colors off of these as well. Um, and in a lot of cases, because they offer that ramp, you can kind of play them even if one of the colors is off color. Uh, I'm not saying you should, obviously, but there are certain situations where that's doable. So I actually really like this card. I'm obviously hoping that this is not the first pick, but it's not a bad pickup. I think you can actually pick these pretty early in this set. Uh, Goblin Spelunkers is a 2-2 two -two for two and a red, and it has Mountain Walk. So... Uh, not a great card here, if I'm honest. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3, so it's a little understated. Uh, the Mountain Walk is nice, but I think it's more of a sideboard card or just a filler card. Uh, I think if you're lacking in 3 drops, maybe you can main deck this. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a really good card to bring in against opposing red decks because, obviously, Mountain Walk means that this is unblockable, assuming they control a mountain. So, 
Uh, lots of positive if you're up against red. If you're not, it's pretty bad. Uh, not a whole lot more to say about it. I don't think it's a very solid first pick for sure. Uh, so I'm not looking at it here, uh, especially not over the Demir Aqueduct. Ooh. Uh, Farseek, a very good card. So it's a sorcery for one and a green. Uh, search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card. Put it into your hand, or excuse me, put it into play tapped, then shuffle your library. Uh, this is a really good card on multiple levels. So, uh, first of all, it gets any land, which just means it's fixing for you no matter what. Uh, if you're base green and you're looking at multiple other colors to splash, this is the perfect card. Even if you're not, you could be mono green. Uh, this still fetches out a land for you, a little bit of deck thinning. It puts it straight on the battlefield. Yes, it's tapped, but that just means you're up mana the next turn. Uh, so this is a really, really solid card, I think. It lets you be in multiple colors, which is amazing as well. And honestly, I think it's a better pick than Demir Aqueduct, uh, just because that deck thinning is really, really nice. Uh, yeah, it seems kind of minuscule, but every little bit helps when you're in a game. So I'm actually in for this. I definitely think so far it's the pick. Uh, Woodwraith Strangler is a 2-2 two -two for two, a black, and a green. Remove a creature card in your graveyard from the game and regenerate the Strangler. Uh, I don't super love this. Um, it's going to be very difficult to deal with, which is nice, but it's still a 2-2 two -two for four, uh, which is not great. Uh, that's just very, very understated. Normally, I would lean towards like a just really solid creature, but I think that this is too expensive to make it really worth it. Um, and in the green black deck, you're looking at like a dredge deck. Uh, and so you might actually want some recursion in your graveyard. I don't know for sure. This has that synergy with it regardless. So it's nice, but four mana for a two, two, I'm not in for that. Uh, I don't think that this is a super good card. Uh, induce paranoia, uh, is an instant for two and two blue counter target spell. Uh, if black was spent to play Induce Paranoia, that spells control that spells controller, excuse me, puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So this plays very, very well into the Demir kind of mill theme. Uh, it's really, really an interesting one if you can make it work. Uh, you do kind of have to get a lot of pieces, but this is certainly one of them. It gives you that interaction. It also gives you a mill outlet, things like that. I really like this card. I don't know if it's better than Farseek. I think Farseek is just a more like on point solid card. Uh, but Induced Paranoia is very, very strong. I think it has a little bit higher upside. Uh, if you're looking to go mill, mill's a very good strategy if you can make it work because you know you've only got about 40 cards to deal with. So I actually really like it. But again, I don't know if it's better than Farseek. I'm going to keep them together for now. Uh, as we go through the rest of the pack, we'll reevaluate and see where we are. <coughs> Uh, Shred Memory is one and a black for an instant. Uh, remove up to four target cards in a single graveyard from the game. Uh, normally, I'll just go ahead and say that doesn't have a ton of relevance in Limited. Because things like Dredge are in this format, this actually does have a decent amount of relevance because you can hit the Dredgers. That being said, it's a very specific deck and that regulates it a little bit more to the sideboard. Uh, but this also features Transmute, which is a really interesting mechanic. So in this case, you pay one and two black, uh, discard this card, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this one, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. You can only do that as a sorcery, so you do have to do that main phase, but essentially this allows you to go into your deck, pick something else that's two mana, uh, and bring it out, which is really cool. Uh, it gives you a little bit of utility to be able to, you know, pull these cards out that you might need. Uh, obviously, it requires a little bit of, like, knowing your deck, uh, because... If you just don't have many cards at two, it's not going to be worth it. But uh, this does give you an out to, to pull some of those cards, which is nice. That being said, I don't think it's the pick here. Uh, it's not the most flexible card because, again, that first ability or that first effect is fine. It's more playable in this format than I think others, but I don't think it's actually that great. Uh, transmuting for a two mana card is fine as well, but again, doesn't seem better than the cards we already have. So I don't think this is the pick for sure. <clears throat> uh, Reign of Embers is one in a red for a sorcery. Uh, deals one damage to each creature and each player. Uh, pretty straightforward card. I honestly don't love it that much. Uh, one damage is definitely significant. It can definitely deal with some stuff, but I don't think it's that amazing. Uh, I think we've got higher upside cards already. 
Uh, there's not a ton to say here other than the fact that, you know, if you've got some 1-1s out on the field or your opponent does, this is going to deal with them. Uh, anything X1 is going to be dealt with with this. Uh, and then also, you know, one damage to the opponent is fine, but it's not that amazing. Uh, for two mana, it's a pretty okay effect, but that's about it. Uh, again, I think we've got better upside cards already, uh, so I just don't think this is worth it. Uh, Dryad's Caress is four and two green for an instant. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you gain one life for each creature in play. Uh, if white was spent to play Dryad's Caress, untap all creatures that you control. Uh, so a really interesting card. Um, not a favorite of mine, if I'm honest, but it does fit very, very well into the Selesnia kind of token strategy. Uh, if you've not played with this set, again, we're seeing a lot of this, but each two color pair has a lot of really specific synergies. Uh, obviously, Induced Paranoia, a very good example of the mill Demir strategy. Uh, Golgari has Dredge. Selesnia is very, very focused on tokens. Uh, so flood the board as best you can, get a lot of creatures out. And this is definitely a payoff card in some respects because uh, not only do you gain that life off of this, but it's an instant. You can play it on your opponent's turn, surprise, block a bunch of stuff, do a lot of really powerful things. But I don't think that this is a reason to be in that. Uh, and so I don't love this as much as the other cards that we've got that leave us... I'll say in the case of Farseek, much more open. Uh, and Induced Paranoia, I think, is just a good card on its own without needing a huge strategy. Uh, and so in that regard, I'd like to stay open a little bit more, especially since this is a first pick. And I don't think that this allows that uh, quite as much as the other cards that we have. Oh, good card. Uh, Siege Worm. Uh, is a 5-5 five, five for 5 and 2 green. It does have Convoke. So each creature you tap while playing its... Uh, while playing this spell reduces its cost by one or by one mana of that creature's color. So this can actually tap for, or excuse me, your other creatures can actually tap for green, which is cool. Uh, it does also have trample. Pretty straightforward card. It's not amazing, but it does serve the purpose of just a decent bomb. Uh, it gives you a way of like ramping into it as well on itself by having that convoke, which is really nice. If you've got creatures out, they're going to help you cast this. Uh, obviously, that's going to depend on the board state. Sometimes you'll want to swing in with those creatures instead. So you just have to evaluate that at the time uh, when you're looking to play this and make the best decision you can at that point. Um, because, again, this is not necessarily focused. It's very, very good, obviously, in the Celestia deck. We just talked about going wide as best we can and then you know playing out a big dude like this is a great follow-up to all that however it doesn't have to be that's kind of the cool thing about this is it leaves you open it's very similar to far seek and even induced paranoia which again i don't think is a super narrow card uh i think that this leaves you open enough that you could take this and have just a decent bomb that being said, I don't know if it's that great of a bomb. Uh, we're going to see what the rest of the pack holds, and I'm going to keep it out for now, but we'll certainly see as we go through. Uh, Boros Signet is an artifact for two mana of any color. Uh, you can pay one of any color, tap it, and add one red and one white to your mana pool. Uh, there's a whole cycle of these Signets, of course. Uh, Boros is, I gotta be honest, probably one of my least favorites. Uh, for one big reason, it's the aggro deck. Uh, so if you're taking your turn two to play something that just gives you a little bit more mana, that doesn't seem great in that deck. Uh, obviously, the upside to this is it allows you to splash colors and then say you're in a green-white deck and you've got a really good red card. Maybe you want to splash it off the Signet. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but I don't think in general that you pick these too highly. Uh, I do think they're good. I do think they're playable. But I think we've got better options here. Uh, and again, because of the colors that this is in, I don't think it's the highest priority Signet either. Uh, our first uncommon is Stone Shaker Shaman. It is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a red. Uh, at the beginning of each player's turn, that player sacrifices an untapped land. Uh, really interesting card. I don't think I like this. Uh, it's a very symmetric effect, which I don't like. Uh, and uh, it just seems kind of silly. I guess you can technically just tap down all your lands. Uh, whatever. I don't think this is a very good card. Uh, I think this is definitely bad in draft um that might be incorrect i didn't play during this time i collected i didn't play uh so i don't know how this panned out in draft but I, from what i've seen and from the flashback drafts that i have done kind of after the fact doesn't seem like a great card to me uh i don't think i would run it especially over the things that we've already got 
Uh, Halcyon Glaze is an enchantment for one and two blue. Uh, whenever you play a creature spell, it becomes a 4-4 illusion creature with flying until the end of the turn. It is still an enchantment. Uh, this is actually a really interesting card, I think. Uh, so one, uh, it is an enchantment, which on the face of it just means it's going to be harder for the opponent to deal with it until it becomes a creature. Uh, generally speaking, enchantment hate is not super prominent main decked, uh, at least again, right before sideboard. So uh, I actually kind of like that. It means it's just going to be a little bit trickier for them to deal with. You're going to be playing creature spells a lot of the time. Uh, that's the focus of limited. You play a lot of creature spells so you can take over the board and win that way. This gives you a 4-4 flyer pretty reliably, which I think is pretty solid. Uh, again, I don't know if it's the best pick, but I think out of everything we have so far, I like this the most. Um, I, again, I haven't drafted a ton of this, uh, definitely not during the time that it came out, but I think that this is a really fun card. I think I would try it here over everything else. Uh, Wojek Ember Mage, uh, hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 1-2 for 3 and a red. Uh, it features Radiance, which is the very Boros-focused mechanic. Uh, you can tap it and it deals 1 damage to target creature and each other creature that shares a color with it. Uh, really interesting card here. I don't know if this is better than uh, the Glaze. I kind of don't think so. Um, I do think that this is a powerful effect. Being able to ping down a creature is really, really good. Uh, I'd rather be able to ping an opponent, if I'm honest. Uh, I think that would be much better. I would be way more into it. Uh, but on the face of it, there's a four mana one, two that might be able to ping some stuff. The problem with that is on turn four, you're probably not dealing with very many X ones at that point, unless there are some tokens out or something like that, of course. Uh, and so I don't think that this has a ton of relevance uh, in the like later turns of the game. Uh, I, I think it's nice because you can certainly stack some damage with some combat damage, which might be, you know, something you have to think about. It, it definitely muddles up combat for the opponent. But I kind of just like the glaze better. It's a better beater. It's a more aggressive kind of card. And I, I think that's what we want here. And our rare is Nullstone Gargoyle. Uh, nine mana of any color for a 4-5. Uh, it does have flying, and whenever the first non-creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. Interesting. If it was not nine mana, I'd be so much more into it. Uh, so if you don't know, something that they did during this time uh, was, and I believe I read this from like either Mark Rosewater's article or somebody's article on uh, uh, from Wizards, they didn't devalue the rare slot necessarily, but they made it so that uh, like the uncommons and the commons in the set were a little bit more uh, highly sought after when it comes to a limited environment. Uh, now, what that meant was some of the rares were really hit or miss uh, in terms of value. Uh, a lot of them were really interesting, but not necessarily quite as good and limited as you would think. Uh, this one, I don't know, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, it's a really interesting one, but I kind of think the glaze is better. Uh, the reason being, uh, nine mana is a lot of mana. That's a ton of mana. What's great about it is it does not solidify you into any deck. That's amazing. It is also a four or five flyer, which means it's gonna be getting in for damage in the air, which is great. And if you're not playing a high volume of non-creature spells, this is going to be dealing a lot of damage to the opponent. It really shuts them down on a lot of that stuff. Uh, that being said, I just don't know. I don't know if it's good. Uh, I feel like it's worth it to maybe try it. Uh, but I do think it's kind of between the Gargoyle and the Glaze here. I don't think this is an amazing pack, uh, but definitely a couple decent options the gargoyles are so expensive. I don't know that you would... I mean, you have to ramp into it. Uh, there are bounce lands to help you get there. Maybe we go gargoyle and just try it, but I think the safer pick is the glaze. Uh, you guys tell me in the comments section below. I'm going to cop out a little bit and ask for your help on this one. Uh, please, of course, if you do disagree or if you drafted during this time, share your thoughts in the comments section. I would very much love to have a little bit more insight into these packs. Uh, they're very, very fun for me to open. And I the, again, this is my favorite set, but uh, I didn't draft during that time. I uh, did a couple flashback drafts. That's about it. So please feel free to weigh in in the comment section. I certainly do hope you will. If you are interested again in that giveaway, please make sure to enter as well. We really would appreciate the support. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.